woman from Oregon who speaks with an English accent. Well, that might not seem so unusual, but she says she developed it after undergoing oral surgery. We're going to talk to her in a moment, but first, NBC's Miguel Almaguer has her story. Any conversation with Karen Butler... Get that under your belt? ...inevitably leads to the same question. Where are you from? Where did you get that accent? The answer is Newport, Oregon, a tiny picturesque coastal community two and a half hours outside of Portland. In this small beach town where it seems like just about everyone knows one another, Karen can't even open her mouth before inviting a lot of questions. You tell them I got it from here. <laughs> from here? Oregon? They think I say Ireland, but I'm saying Oregon. Karen says her accent has its roots here, at her dentist's office. A year and a half ago, she underwent oral surgery and was given a sedative. So I went to sleep, and when I woke up, I did not sound like myself. Karen's oral surgeon didn't want to speak on camera to NBC News, but he did confirm when Karen woke up, she was speaking differently. Listen to Karen's voice on this home video before surgery. You're filming my dirty house. This is the Karen everyone knew, the familiar voice of a wife, mother, and friend. But when Karen came home from surgery, no one could believe their ears. Say Saskatchewan, or say Schenectady, say Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Well, it was a lot of fun, and even I had fun. So Karen has an extremely unusual neurologic condition. That's called foreign accent syndrome. Dr. Ted Lowenkoff is a neurologist who says the syndrome is triggered by a stroke or trauma to the brain. While he's not examined Karen, he's met with her before and says her speech may have been altered during oral surgery. It's so rare, less than 100 cases ever reported, that the average neurologist, even a stroke neurologist, would not see a case in their lifetime. Karen says for months, doctors were baffled by her medical mystery, and so was everyone else. Hi, good morning. How are you? Even now, after a year and a half with the accent, busier than all get eyes. Karen gets questions, but also admiration. I think it's really cool, actually. <laughs> like, I wouldn't mind waking up with, like, a cool accent someday. An accent from an ocean away. No, the big long one. A new voice that seems to suit Karen Butler and her family just fine. For today, Miguel Almaguer, NBC News, Newport, Oregon. Karen Butler is with us now along with her husband, Glenn, and NBC's chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman, is joining us from Washington. Good morning to you all. Good morning. So, so Karen, and I think there are people at home probably who find this bizarre and might think she's got to be faking this. I don't think you could. Not for a year and a half. Yeah, do, do you get that at all from people, the skepticism? <laughs> Not really. The most skeptical I've seen is this last week when we were talking to the media when they have to make sure that everything is only up and up. And So what was it like when you, when you woke up and your voice had changed? That, that has got to be strange. Well, I had just had dental surgery, so you're swollen and sore and your family's making fun of your new funny voice and it just very simply did not go away so at first you know you think it's just the results of that happening a week goes by the swelling goes down and you're still not talking yourself and after a month then you're looking for answers because you know this is just not normal Ian Glenn were you worried at any point that there might be something seriously no. wrong with no no we, we've, we've had more fun with this than anything else her sister came down the first week and she was back on her feet and Sat around, drank a couple of beers, and came up with terms and words just to see if she could say it. <laughs> Spent a weekend doing that. Well, but at some point, did you ever get diagnosed with this? What's what? What is it called? Foreign accent syndrome? Did you go to a neurologist and get diagnosed? When, when I talked to my doctor, and he said, "Well, there's nothing wrong with you, and uh, there isn't. I no loss of uh, motor skills, no problem with my eyes, no uh, facial." Um, sl <clears throat> Ticks or anything like that, right? right. Yeah. I'm a okay. Yeah. Um. So it's all in your head. So it's not just th th that your voice has a different accent. It's, are you changing word patterns at all too, or is it just individual words? My sister Nona thinks that I have changed my uh, pattern of speech, but I think it's just that um, it's tinted with this other 
other sound. Yeah, the other sound. I want to bring in Dr. Nancy here. What do we know about foreign accent syndrome? Obviously, it's very rare. It is rare, Meredith, less than uh, 100 cases uh, over the globe, and that's what makes it difficult because it really becomes a diagnosis of exclusion. You have to rule out things like brain tumors and strokes or any recent brain injury. And if you listen very carefully, as I, I've been listening to the accent, it's not like you can say, oh, well, I can tell you're from County Cork or you must be from <laughs> Dublin. It's an imprecise change to English. So there is a change in cadence, the change in the way the syllables are enunciated. So it becomes sort of an atypical pickup of an accent that rather is sort of untypable. My only word of caution is I think this is the perfect case to get an absolutely confirmed diagnosis, and that means neurologist, radiologist, get the right scans, see a speech pathologist, and really make sure that there's nothing else going on. Then, if that's okay, then I'm you know, perfectly willing to live with this diagnosis. Well, can, you, can she get her original voice back, or is this a case of, you know, this one seems to work for her now, so let it be? There are reports that people have this gradually go away. Um, other cases really go back hundreds of years where we really don't know what the resolution was. So I think for the, in this situation, it's going to be watchful waiting. But I would hope that it would be watchful waiting under the guise of a really good speech-language pathologist who can watch the changes. And that means recording her voice, documenting the changes, and um, and really doing it under a professional's watch. Good, thanks. Yes, Kia, Karen, I get the sense you really don't want to go where you're having a little bit of fun with this, right? Well, it has been. It's just like a new toy, and that's what we've played with it, but like I said, we've had it for a year and a half, and it's like a chameleon voice, whatever pops out, pops out, and you can't make uh, make it be something that it isn't. You can pretend to have a southern drawl, and, or talk like uh, John Wayne, and I can't, very yeah. simply, what, whatever pops out of my mouth is what pops out. Well, our director, Joe Michaels, thinks it's Irish, but he wants to hear the word Guinness, and then he'll be sure. Guinness? Yeah, it sounds Irish. Thanks. <laughs> Joe, Irish? Thank you, Karen and Glenn, very much. Nice to have you here.